All right. Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? Hope you're doing as well as me. It's good to see you, and I'm back with another video. Um, so today, as always, we're gonna uh, we're gonna sing a hymn. We're gonna sing a song to the Lord, glorify God, praise God, and then we're gonna uh, have an opening reading from God's Word from uh, Luke, the Book of Luke, and then um, and then we're gonna uh, get into a little bit of preaching. I'm gonna preach a little bit, preach a short message, and then we're going to. Close in prayer and do it as I do what as I always say is giving God the last word. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, we're going to be in the Soul Stirring Songs and Hymns, number three ten. Footprints of Jesus, footprints of Jesus. If you want to sing with me, here we go. <clears throat> Sweetly, Lord, have we heard thee calling, come follow me. And we see where thy footprints falling lead us to thee. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where'er they go. Though they lead o'er the cold, dark mountain, seeking his sheep, or along by Siloam's fountains, helping the weak. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where'er they go. If they lead through the temple holy, preaching the word. Or in homes of the poor and lowly, serving the Lord. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where'er they go. Then at last one on high he sees us our journey done. We will rest when the steps of Jesus end at his throne. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where'er they go. Amen. Amen. You want to follow the footsteps of Jesus? So do I. <clears throat> Our opening verse is in... The Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter chapter number 9, excuse me, chapter number 9, verses 57 through the end. <clears throat> and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not nowhere to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. And go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell. Which are home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looked back, is fit for the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Alves. Good to see you again. God bless you in Jesus' name. God bless this, God bless this message. I want to start off by asking you a question. Have you ever wanted to go somewhere and do something 
And then when you thought about, you know, what it would take to actually go do that thing, you changed your mind. You're like, nah, never mind. That's that's going to cost too much money to go there. That's going to uh, take too much effort. It's too far away or whatever the case. Well, Jesus said, no man who has put his hand to the plow, looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. What does that mean? That means if you decide to follow Jesus... You, if you truly want to follow the Bible, follow what Jesus taught, you have to determine that you're going to will that you are willing to accept the responsibility and the cost of what all that entails of following Him and, go, and goes along with it. If you if you if you say I'm going to follow Jesus and then you change your mind and say Yeah, but you know I don't want to read the Bible. You know I I don't really want to. Uh, you know there's a lot of commandments in the Bible. You know like reading the Bible, going to church, praying. You're not willing to do these things. How can you really say you want to follow Jesus? Because they they go hand in hand. They go together, right? You know, sometimes we're going to be persecuted for our beliefs. Some people even martyred or killed. We're going to be outcasted from, from, from groups of our friends, from our family even. Sometimes we're going to be mistreated. We're going to be abused. For the simple fact that the world doesn't operate righteously. Okay? Because remember, Jesus, even Jesus was arrested. um, And he was being interrogated by the governor, Pontius Pilate. and, And Pilate asked him, he said, are you the king of the Jews? Answer me. And Jesus replied in Matthew chapter 18, or excuse me, John chapter 18. If you want to go read it, Jesus answered him and said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should be delivered to the Jews? But no, my kingdom is not from hence. See, the kingdom of heaven, where Jesus comes from, is a holy place. People people there, you know, they don't lie to each other. They don't steal from each other. They don't abuse each other. They don't cheat on each other but the world we live in a world that we're in right now is filled with sin it's an unfair place it's an it's a place where people treat each other poorly to say the least they're dishonest they abuse each other they're greedy they don't really care about god's rules they make up their own rules mostly because we're selfish you know we we want more than uh, what we should have, right? And we and we cheat to get it. I mean, Jesus, he was sinless. He was perfect. He was holy. And how did this world, this sinful world, repay him? Well, ultimately, they killed him. But as he was living here, he was poor. He was poor. He wasn't famous. I mean, eventually, he got famous for the uh, good works he did. But he, he wasn't a famous man. He was a hated man. He was hated by uh, by the people who were famous, who were in power, who were in authority, who were in charge of um, the church of his day. They hated him. And you know what Jesus said to us? He said, "He said you want to follow me. You should follow me first, first and foremost. But if you really want to follow me, you need to be prepared for how the world is going to treat you." If you have a King James Bible, turn to uh, the Gospel according to St. John, the fourth uh, book of the New Testament, chapter 15, chapter 15, and while you're turning there, I'll read from you, Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 5, says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. People love to mock us, right? People who mock the Bible, who scoff at the Bible, who don't want to follow the Bible, they love to abuse us, and they love to mock us and say, Where is that mighty God of yours that's that's going to deliver you from all these troubles that I'm about to inflict on you or that are inflicted on you. 
But what does God say? God says, eventually, they're going to be ashamed. They shall be ashamed. That's what God says. John chapter 15, starting in verse 18. Let's see what Jesus says. John 15, starting in verse 18. Jesus says, if the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Jesus chose us to be out of the world. He says, I want you guys separate from the world. I want you for myself. I want you eventually in the kingdom of heaven with me. And if you want to be there too, you have a chance. You could do that. You could believe on the Lord Jesus. You could set yourself apart from the rest of the world and, and uh, be a, become a citizen of heaven. But guess what? The world's going to hate you because you are not of the world. Make no mistake about it. People who are of the world hate the Bible. And if you proclaim that you believe this book, you believe the Bible, they're going to hate you too. Yeah, they'll tell you one thing. They'll tell you, oh yeah, we believe in freedom of religion. We believe that we're not going to discriminate against you. Go ahead and believe your Bible. Go ahead, go to church. But the reality is they hate you. They may put on the face and make it seem like they don't, but they do in their hearts. And especially people who abuse the Bible, who use the Bible to twist it, to twist scripture, to make it say what they want it to say, to fit their own agenda. You know, people who take the Lord's name in vain, people who use the Bible to make themselves appear holy. These people hate the Bible, because if you were to come out and tell them what the Bible really says, you know, they're going to hate you for that. Somebody who preaches the Bible, who, 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 who proclaims the truths in the Bible, they can't be contended with. And it's not because they're so smart. It's because God's word is so powerful. God's word is so powerful that when you preach it, when you talk about it, it stands and it, and it puts anybody who's saying something different to shame. Makes them scared of you. Makes them fear you. That's why they come after you. That's why they hate you. And Jesus warns us that because you believe the truth, because you believe Jesus, just for that fact alone, they're going to hate you. Us, people who believe the Bible, they're going to hate us for that. So we have a decision to make. Do I want to follow the world or do I want to follow Jesus? Do I want to be accepted by the world or, or do I want to be accepted by Jesus? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, you don't have to turn there, but Jesus says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. We have a choice to make. Do you want the riches of the world that the world has to offer? Because if you do that, you know, they'll, they'll, or excuse me, the fame that the world is offering you, the fame and the fortune and the riches, you could do that, but then you're going to have to reject the Lord's ways. Okay? But, it, but if you want to accept the Lord Jesus, then you're going to have to be poor like he was. I mean, Jesus was poor. He said, he said, hey, the foxes have places to sleep tonight. The birds have nests in the trees. But me, the king of kings, the perfect sinless son of God, I have nowhere to sleep tonight. I'm poor. I don't even have a place to live. That's how the world treats holy people. That's how the world treats God's people. Because we're not of this world. This world is a sinful world. Let's keep reading. John chapter 15. Where are we at? Verse 20. 
Jesus says, Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had to sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had to sin, but now they both uh, seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the world might be fulfilled, the word, excuse me, might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Jesus is quoting the Old Testament there. We'll stop there. Um, For now, the world will always try to make up an excuse as to why they're going to persecute you. They'll always have a reason. They'll always uh, come up with something to uh, take your money, to take away your dignity, to take away your pride. And I want you to notice this, um, that usually what I find is that somebody who's mistreating you, abusing you, or sinning against you, if you will, well, one, they don't have any joy in their heart because they're not following the Bible. That's why they're doing this in the first place. Um, So they're miserable inside their own heart. But two, is they always have something to gain always some selfish greedy reason behind what they're doing i I think the bible says uh uh, the love of money is is the root of all evil so there's always some kind of love of some kind of worldly uh um treasure that they want to obtain for themselves whether it be uh physical money or or fame or status or whatever that's what they're after and they're willing to do whatever it takes to you to get it Maybe it's just simply ignoring you, okay? Disregarding you, or, or or maybe they're saying bad things against you, like, oh, you're just a Bible thumper. You're just a religious nut. Or, or maybe they'll accuse you, they'll falsely accuse you and say, oh, you're just preaching the Bible uh, because you think you're better than us. You're holier than thou, thou Christian. But listen, there's always something that they have to gain behind that. There's a love of money that's the root behind what they're doing to you. Because they know that if they can make you look bad, if they can destroy your reputation, or or if they can discredit you, um, get everybody else to just ignore you, they'll make themselves look good, right? They'll have to gain. You see, when you decide to follow Jesus, you're going to gain the hate. Oh yeah, you're going to get it um, from like your friends, your family, whoever, whoever doesn't want to follow the book. Um, but Jesus said, don't take it personally, right? They hated me, so they're going to hate you. It's not personal. They just don't want to follow the Bible. They just don't want to follow the rules. It's nothing wrong that you're doing, okay? You're, you're, you're trying to do the right thing, but they just hate you. <laughs> they hate doing the right thing. They hate what's right. They hate the truth. And you can take comfort in the fact that there's nothing you can do about it. You can't change their mind. You could try. Of course, we should try to uh, reconcile people. Um, but if they've already determined, hey, I don't, I don't want to follow the rules. I'm going to break the rules. I'm selfish. I'm greedy. They're going to hate you for standing up for what the truth, standing up for what's right. See, but Jesus gave us the good news. He said, look, I'm not just going to leave you out there to hang and hang, uh, hang, uh, hang you out there to dry, right? He's not going to just leave us to uh, get abused without giving us some kind of comfort. So I want you to look at John chapter uh, 15, verse 26. Jesus says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also should, shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Jesus says, Look, I'm going to send you a Comforter. I'm going to send you somebody. The Holy Spirit is what he's talking about here. 
to give you the power to overcome this. You know, when, when people are hating you, they're persecuting you, I'm going to give you the comfort of the Holy Spirit, not only to endure it, but to continue doing righteousness, to continue following me. He says, to continue to bear witness of me. I mean, just the fact that you're being persecuted alone bears witness that what Jesus said is true. But he's going to give us a comforter. And how comforting is that? He even calls it the comforter, right? You ever have a nice warm uh, blanket or something that you like to wrap yourself in at night? It's just so comfortable, right? It feels great. Well, that's what Jesus said. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you something warm, something comforting. That's not only going to bring you comfort, but it's going to give you joy in your heart. You know, even though the world hates you, you're going to be happy in your own heart because you know, hey, I'm doing what's right. I'm doing the right thing. God's on my side. Not only that, he's going to give you a new life. Your soul is going to be transformed. You're going to have new life. Let's skip down uh, to the last verse in John chapter 16. So it's the next verse, or the next chapter. The last verse, let's read this. I just wanted to read uh, John 16, 33. Jesus says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus said, look, people are going to abuse you. You can't get around that. It's just going to happen. That's what's going to happen. But don't be shocked when it does happen. When you start following me, you start living righteously. Expect it. Expect people to hate you for it. Don't let it trip you up. Don't let it get you uh, from stop following this book. You need to expect it. And just go about your, your, your way rejoicing, singing songs to the Lord. And because Jesus said, when somebody slaps you on, on one's cheek, turn them to the other also, right? Pray for them. Be good to them. Expect that they're going to slap you. When they come and slap you, don't be like, oh, why'd you slap me? What the heck? Expect it. It's coming. You already knew it was coming. Jesus told you it was coming. So when it comes, just say, oh, yeah. There it is, Jesus. I was, I was waiting for that. And Jesus said, look, when they come to attack you, when that happens, you already knew it was coming, so it should not surprise you. You should know exactly how to respond when it happens. You don't respond in fear. You don't get scared. Oh, don't, sm don't smack me. Please don't smack You already know they're going to smack you. You don't have to get mad at them. You don't have to respond in anger and smack them back. So how do we respond, Sean? With love. You respond with love. You respond with righteousness. With the Bible. You can quote scripture. You can uh, sing hymns to yourself to comfort yourself. Whatever it is you need to do at the moment, depending on the situation. But we respond in love. We respond with joy. We respond with peace. Happiness, long suffering. Why? Because Jesus overcame the world. Okay? And we're on Team Jesus. If you're on Team Jesus, you're on the winning team. So the people who are mistreating you, they're abusing you, they're just sore losers. That's really all it comes down to. They're sore losers. They already lost. You won. So they're trying to hurt you because. They think that they still have a chance at winning. The game's over. Jesus won. He overcame the world. Past tense. Overcame. I overcame the world. Let's read that again. Man, that feels good, right? I have overcome the world. Overcome. He says overcome. Either way, it's past tense. But these people think they still have a chance at winning. The devil still thinks he has a chance. If not, if, if, even if he knows he lost, they still want to sling mud at you. Because they're sore losers. They already know they lost. But Jesus said, what did he say? Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. When the world hates you, be of good cheer. Follow me. 
expect to be hated, but be of good cheer. That's my message for the day, guys. When we decide to follow Christ, we don't have time to be distracted with the world. We have to be focused on following God's word. And when the world uh, teaches you that, hey, you know, when somebody mistreats you, uh, give them back what they deserve, you know, get back at them. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. Or, hey, you need to be afraid of those evil, mean things that people will do to you. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. Jesus says, look, be a good cheer. As long as you're doing what God tells you to do, you're obeying the commandments, you have nothing to fear. If they beat you, they mock you, they throw you in prison, they kill you, expect it. Because they hated Jesus. So they will also hate you. Jesus told us it was going to happen. So when that happens, that should actually bring joy to your heart. Almost like a confirmation like, oh, of course, yeah, Jesus was right. That's why this is happening to me. That's why they're treating me this way. Because I follow Jesus. And that should strengthen your faith to serve him even more. Anyways, that's my message for the day, friends. You have a choice. You don't have a choice on how the world's going to treat you. They're going to hate you. But you have a choice on how you're going to respond to that. Do you want to respond the way Jesus said? Or do you want to respond in hate, in anger, the way the world teaches? Because if you want to follow Jesus, you have to determine right now, before you start following him, that you're going to suffer the persecution. Do I want the Holy Spirit to comfort me? Or do I want to take the comforts of the world that the comfort of the world has to offer? Money, riches. That's going to cost you your soul. The choice is yours. You want to follow Jesus? Do you truly want to follow Jesus? That's my message for the day, guys. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day in Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for uh, listening to this message. I hope this message uh, blessed you and encouraged you. Anyway, um, let's all follow Jesus. Like I said, we're going to uh, close in prayer and then we're going to give God the last word. And we're going to be in Second Peter for that if you want to read along. Let's bow in prayer. Thanks for listening. God bless. Dear Father in heaven, thank you very much for this message you gave us today. Um, and thank you for giving us a heads up on, so we don't have to be surprised when the world comes to persecute us. Lord, uh, it's not easy when the world hates us and comes against us. You know all about that. So, Father, we, we just thank you for sending us the Holy Spirit as, a, as our comforter. And, Lord, we, we need your Holy Spirit to comfort us because this world is a, is a wicked, sinful place. And it's very hard sometimes, Lord, to, to be joyful when uh, the world's coming, coming after us. And, Lord, we, we ask that uh, you remind us that uh, you overcame the world and that we have nothing to fear. For serving you father we're we're sorry that this sinful wicked world uh, doesn't give you the glory that you deserve and father please see that our suffering does bring you glory lord because we believe you and that we we suffer these persecutions for you because we know that the world hates you not us lord we won't take it personally even through death, Lord, we'll, we refuse to go against you for your glory, Lord, because we know that we're on the winning team and you've already overcame the world. Lord, we ask that we, you teach us your ways, give us the strength to follow you and to walk in your ways. And we ask, and Lord, I ask that you be with all the people here, people now who hear this message. Lord, I ask that you send them the comforter and Give them joy in their heart to serve you and to follow you. Lord, I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. As always, we're going to give God the last word. I said uh, we're going to read from 1 Peter 
Chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 4. And we're going to start in verse 12 through the end of the chapter. God bless. Have a, have a great day in Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not stranger concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceedingly joy. If ye be repart. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of the glory, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of your suffer, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busy bo- as a busybody in other ma- in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing, as unto a faithful creator. Amen.